Human body gets essential nutrients from food. Body absorbs these essential nutrients from food through a process called digestion. Digestion process starts when you eat food or drinks water, and ends with exertion of waste material from body. All in all, the whole process, from the time you swallow food to the time it leaves your body as feces, takes about two to four days. There are two types of digestion process occurred in human body. Mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Mechanical digestion begins in the mouth as the food is chewed. Chewing breaks the food into pieces. Chemical digestion begins in the mouth when the food mixes with saliva. Saliva contains an enzyme, amylase, that begins the breakdown of carbohydrates. Once you begin swallowing, the process becomes automatic. Muscles in your esophagus propel food down to your stomach. The epiglottis is a flexible flap, at the end of the larynx in the throat. It acts as a switch between, the larynx and the esophagus, to permit air to enter the airway to the lungs, and food to pass into the esophagus. The esophagus is a muscular tube, connecting the throat with the stomach. The esophagus is about 20 centimeters long. The esophagus muscle acts with peristaltic action to move swallowed food down to the stomach. The action of peristalsis looks like an ocean wave moving through the muscle. When food reaches the end of your esophagus, a ring-like muscle called the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes and lets the food pass into your stomach. The food then enters the stomach, which is a rounded hollowed, J-shaped organ, located between the esophagus and the small intestine. The stomach is where the real action begins. Digestive juices and enzymes produced by the stomach, break down the food that you swallowed. This helps to create nutrients, available for absorption, later in the small intestine. The stomach has three mechanical tasks to do. First, the stomach must store the swallowed food and liquid. This requires the muscle of the upper part of the stomach to relax and accept large volumes of swallowed material. The inner layer of the stomach is full of wrinkles, known as rugae. Rugae both allow the stomach to stretch in order to accommodate large meals and help to grip and move food during digestion. The second job is to mix up the food and liquid with digestive juice produced by the stomach. The digestive juices are powerful hydrochloric acids that kill pathogens in food and gives the stomach the low pH digestive enzymes needed. This acid could literally dissolve most of the other organs in your body. Luckily, your stomach contains a thick mucus lining that will protect the stomach from this digestive acid. However, when there's too much acid in the stomach, it can eat away the inner surface of the stomach, causing an ulcer. Weakness of the sphincter muscles causes a back flux of stomach acid. This back flux of stomach acid course to gas trouble and heartburn. Actions of muscles in the lower part of the stomach breaks down the food into tiny particles of around 3 mm. And mix food and liquid with digestive juices. Mix of food and digestive juices create a acidy mash it is called chyme. Finally, the stomach transfer this chyme, slowly into the first section of the small intestine called the duodenum. The small intestine, or small bowel, is an organ in the gastrointestinal tract, where most of the end absorption of nutrients and materials, from food takes place. It lies between the stomach and large intestine, and receives bile and pancreatic juices through the pancreatic duct to aid in digestion. The pancreas makes enzymes that break down carbohydrates and proteins and delivers them to the duodenum through small tubes called ducts. 
The liver makes a digestive juice called bile and store it in the gallbladder. That helps digest fats and some vitamins. When you eat, your gallbladder squeezes bile through the ducts into your duodenum. Duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, which receives partially digested food from the stomach, and begins the absorption of nutrients. The duodenum is the shortest segment of the intestine and is about 23 to 28 centimeters long and 9 to 11 centimeters wide. The pancreatic juices and bile that are released into the duodenum help the body to digest fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. The food is in intestine now and have very long way to go. Length of small intestine is about 200 centimeters in newborn baby and it will be almost 6 meter in an adult. The peristalsis actions of the small intestine mix food with digestive juices from pancreas, liver and intestines and push the mixture forward for further digestion. The inner walls of the small intestine have mucosal folds. These muscular folds inside the small intestine is called the plice circularis. The plice are more numerous in the upper parts of small intestine and reduce the numbers in the later part and are completely absent in the end. The walls of the small intestine are covered by tiny finger-like projections, called villi. These projections increase the surface area, through which nutrients can be absorbed into your bloodstream. Nutrients pass through villi into the bloodstream. What is left over is mostly liquid, as peristalsis continues, these remaining products of the digestive process move into the large intestine. The large intestine is named for the diameter of the cavity, not for its length. It is actually much shorter than the small intestine. Large intestine is about 150 centimeters long and 3 to 8 centimeters wide. The role of large intestine is to absorb any extra water from the digested material before it is finally excreted. If food passes through large intestine too quickly, too little water is absorbed and you might have diarrhea. If it passes too slowly, your body absorbs too much water, and you may become constipated. It takes about 30 hours for food to move through the large intestine. More water absorbs here in large intestine. Bacteria in the large intestine helps break down remaining nutrients and materials. Microbes that reside in the large intestine make a meal of the leftovers from the small intestine. The smell associated with stool comes from the gases released by bacteria. Then the peristalsis movements in the large intestine helps to move the leftover material into the rectum. The rectum is like a storage holder for the waste. Muscles in the rectum move the waste, called stool, out of the body through the anus. The anus is the last part of the digestive tract. It is two inches long. The anus is surrounded by sphincter muscles that are important in allowing control of stool. It lets you know whether the contents are liquid, gas or solid.